And welcome to the York County Government Show. I'm Deb Gruber, Morrison County Administrator, and I'll be your host. And today we're joined by two very special guests. I want to welcome Beth Berlin and Elizabeth Keel. Thank welcome. you. Thank you Thank for you. coming. First, tell us a little bit about yourself, how long you've been with Extension and what you do. Sure. Um, as you mentioned, I'm Beth Berlin and I'm an Extension educator with my focus being horticulture and here in Morrison County, specifically local foods. Um, I've only been with Extension going on a year and a half, but I am a local Morrison County resident, so this is my home territory. Well, welcome. Thanks for Thanks. coming. Elizabeth? Yeah, I'm Elizabeth Keogh, and I'm a Ed educator, um, and I'm housed in Todd County, but I work in Todd as well as Morrison County, so I do nutrition education, and I also work with food shelves and grocery stores and anything to do with food, really, in the area. Well, great. So, great. Well, and tell us a little bit about um, the University of Minnesota and how Extension works within county government, in particular Morrison County. Sure. Extension's been around a long time. It's mm -hmm. over 100 years now that Extension has been uh, doing what we do throughout the entire state. And here in Morrison County, I'm fortunate enough to be part of a tri-county and a trio of us. So as I mentioned, I'm an Extension educator in horticulture, but I have coworkers Emily Wilmes and Dan Martins, who have different focuses. Emily is livestock education, and Dan is crops. So we each have to have our expertise, which is really nice. And as most people know, 4-H is affiliated with Extension as well. And so Becky Moe is here in Morrison County, and she does a great job with well over 200 kids in, in Morrison County. Yeah, and I work with the SNAP-Ed program, and SNAP stands for Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program, and so I work with low-income families, and uh, we work with youth in the schools, as well as um, adults, and then um, like we work with the Better Live Longer um, e-group, and we work with just wherever we can support the healthy choice, making the healthy choice the easy choice, so um, we have different areas that we work in to, to help make that possible. Well, so. great, great. You know, you mentioned a couple of things. Local foods is a hot topic right now. What really does local foods mean? What encompasses that? Right. Local foods, and you're right, what is defining local foods? And for us, I think our focus is not only just Morrison County, but a little bit beyond, and making sure that that food is grown and then harvested and eaten um, within our county boundaries as well as a little bit beyond. Making sure we're not just getting it from uh, South America and other locations that we're uh, emphasizing and then using the local foods. Yeah, so I think, you know, we, Extension supports a lot of the efforts for local foods. Um, we work with, um, like, we coordinate with the local food hub, which is going to be opening up this summer. And um, there's also um, Live Better Live Longer has applied for some money to uh, for a prescription um, CSA program, which is Community Supported Agriculture, and they would receive a, a box of produce that's um, grown locally, um, and it would be targeted to families that have uh, different chronic illnesses or diabetes or obesity. And um, so we would, we would be the ones to help teach the cooking skills to the families receiving that if they are able to receive that grant. And then also um, if they have the commercial, once they get the commercial kitchens going, you know, helping with food safety training um, and supporting um, getting local foods into the schools and getting local foods, um, you know, supporting local foods, helping expose people to the farmer's markets. We, we're going to be starting a tour, um, kind of like a grocery store tour, but at a farmer's market. So that's going to be a new curriculum that we'll have to spread, you know, to families to help them feel comfortable, go with them to the farmer's market and help them feel comfortable with, you know, how do you, how do you shop at a farmer's market? What are some good options there? And how to find CSAs for themselves and that kind of thing. Great. How, how do you find the folks you're working with? I, I guess I'll go first. It's been a bit of a challenge, and so anybody listening can certainly seek out. And as I mentioned, my emphasis is to be local food, um, small vegetable growers. And um, m many times that includes people who have the backyard chickens and stuff like that too. But our job is to just find those, not only seeking out and having them contact us, but Extension has for years offered various different workshops in the area. We've just done a, a grant writing opportunity a few weeks back and we do high tunnel workshops in the community as well and so I think we've started already a community of them. It's just a matter of having them seek us out or in her case, you know, she, she has that opportunity to reach out in many different directions as well. 
Yeah, so we work with, we partner with agencies. We try to do a multi-agency approach. So um, we work with, we try to work with agencies that are specifically focused for low-income families, since um, usually we need to have at least 50% of our participants to be low-income. Um, but we can also, um, you know, uh, promote our classes and what we have to offer at churches um, or, you know, wherever people may be interested in us partnering with them. Um, and so we also just working with the schools, you know, talking with the principals and, um, you know, offering our services where, where it would fit with what we do. Because we usually teach classes, we need to have eight participants in the class at least, and then we meet for six sessions. So we don't do so much of the demonstrations anymore. We do more um, cooking classes or nutrition classes. We also teach I Can Prevent Diabetes class, um, which is a year-long class. So we offer mostly the, the classes and then working with, with um, you know, the environmental changes that need to take place and policies surrounding food so that the people that are taking those classes can go out and find the things we're asking them to, to purchase and eat in a, that's, you know, economical and it's accessible to them. So, and the Minnesota Food Charter um, just was launched this year. So that's really, it's a document, a uh, formal document that um, is asking Minnesota to work really hard on making food more accessible and available and affordable, working on food infrastructure, working on food skills, which is what we do. And local foods comes into that, it's really key, you know, for that. So um, support, that's a, kind of a support to us now that we have kind of something formal to say, we, we have the food charter and we you know, need to work on this. We meet together and talk about um, some of those um, issues together as a region. So Morrison County is part of that. Well, great. Mm -hmm. You know, why? Why is this a big deal? Why is it important? It is a big deal. We have, we've kind of disconnected. I think it's um, this, three generations away from having grown up on a farm already. And so we're really trying to focus on bringing that back. And whether that's you yourself and, like I said, a backyard garden, which we have Extension Master Gardeners to assist those people, and they offer um, half-day workshops every now and then for those types of gardeners. But keeping it local, uh, she can mention about the nutrition benefits, but the economic benefit, too the less carbon footprint and just focusing on keeping that money local. We've done um, some research now to find out if those growers are spending their money and they're getting their supplies locally and they are. So it's just a domino effect that the growers are spending their money locally and then hopefully the buyers are spending their money locally and it's keeping our economy here in Morrison County um, really good and positive. Yeah, and then nutrition-wise too, you know, just for the, it benefits the individual as well as the environment, you know, because usually foods that are grown locally are much higher in their nutritional value. They haven't had to go through the transportation, um, and a lot of times chemicals are used to preserve um, the fruits and vegetables, which can compromise the nutritional value of the foods. And then a lot of the water-soluble vitamins are lost in transport, like vitamin C, for example. So... Um, you know, if you get a garden tomato from your backyard and you get a tomato from a store that came, you know, that was transported, it's very different nutritionally. So you may be thinking you're getting, you know, a lot of vitamin, you know, a lot of vitamins in that tomato, but um, it's going to be really, it's going to vary a lot. Yeah. So. And taste. <clears throat> I mean, taste. those that are grown right in your backyard are just so much yes. different taste because as you mentioned, that whole process of them being able to be stored and transported, just the taste isn't there. Yeah, chefs, you know, the best chefs usually want local Local food. foods. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's getting to be a big deal in restaurants as well. Mm -hmm. It is. I can't wait for tomato seeds. <laughs> in my garden. And those that are growing them in high tunnels, they're going to beat the uh, traditional gardener by a good month. So it won't yes. be but a few months away and we'll start have locally grown tomatoes that were produced in high tunnel situations. How many do we have in the county? Do you know? I mean, how many folks are out there doing doing the high tunnels or doing things? I don't know. Um, I'm aware that through the NRCS, there's grant opportunities for mm -hmm. people to get funding to build high tunnels, and they've only done a small number, like a half dozen or so. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean that there's not more out there, and um, it's becoming much more popular because we live in Minnesota. Yes. Our season is still <laughs> so short that to be able to kind of cheat on both yes. ends, these high tunnels allow producers to do that. Yes, considering it's, what is it, April 21st today we're recording this, and there's a, you know, snow outside <laughs> and wind, and yeah, yeah our season right. is short. <laughs> very, very short, isn't uh -huh. it? Um, what is the, the one food item that you talk about a lot of that everybody should eat and it's good for you no matter what? 
Yeah, well, I would pick greens, I think, greens. you know, because a lot of times we don't get enough greens and we also tend to um, be low in the nutrients that are found in greens. And by greens, I, you know, a lot of people think of spinach, yeah. um, but I'm thinking also of, you know, leafy greens that you could put in a salad or um, kale, different types of chard. And a lot of people don't think of those things as being able to eat them raw. Uh, so then it can be like a healthy fast food. You can just throw it in a salad or, um, you know, it's easy to cook. It cooks quickly. Uh, and then also um, it's high in vitamin A and vitamin C, vitamin K, and then folate and calcium and iron, um, and then fiber as well. So those are all things that we tend to be missing in our diet. Mm -hmm. So um, I think if a lot of people ate more, more greens, um, they would find themselves you know, being able to fight infection more. And even some of the phytochemicals um, in some of the in greens help to fight off or cancers or different chronic disease. So I think that would be important, and there's reasons too for. And they're easy to grow. I mean, really, they have such a, a short um, time period from planting that seed to harvest time, mm -hmm. and so, uh, and most of them are cool crops. So when we were saying the tomatoes, tomatoes like heat, yes. so they can't get planted until kind of later, or we had to start them indoors. But greens are one of the first ones that they can go in the ground almost right away, and then you're going to be able to harvest them very quickly, and you can do succession. So you can do a harvest right away. You could plant seeds in the middle, uh, middle of June or even closer to July, and you'll still have fresh greens then even into the fall. So you can do succession planting. and. They don't take much space mm -hmm. either. Many of those, you know, some of those leafy greens, they're only maybe six inches above the ground and their root systems are really shallow. So they can easily be grown in containers as well for people who might not have backyard or space to do it. Yeah, and a lot of kids may be opposed to greens, but there's lots of ways to get kids to eat greens. Um, you know, you make a wrap with them instead of using a tortilla, or you can um, put, put them in stews or hide them in sauces and that kind of thing, or, or any kind of a dip. You know, kids love dip. My 13-year-old so, seems to find things everywhere uh, <laughs> I try to sneak those in, but yes, that is, can be challenging, yeah. but it's fun to have neat ideas. Especially yeah. if they participate in the planting. Oh, right. And, found that. and, getting and then involved. harvesting and, you know, washing. It's so easy. Uh, my little girl likes to wash the greens and spin them, you know. Yep. Mm -hmm. So that's that's another way to get them involved and interested. Fresh or cooked or just all the above. Just yeah. In your body. Oh, yeah, we like to have them fresh, have fresh vegetables as well as a cooked vegetable. I try to teach that to, you know, ha try to include both because then yeah. kids are more likely or other family members to pick at least one. <laughs> but as far as nutritional content, there, you know, when you cook them, is there any disadvantage to that? Or yeah, some some nutrients are lost in cooking, especially boiling and a lot of water. If you throw out the water, but for example, if you put them in a stew, then you're going to have yeah. those uh, in the broth, in the broth. Um, and then also with uh, sautéing, you know, you tend to eat what's in, all of it in there, mm -hmm. and so it's a quick method of cooking, so it tends to preserve the nutrients more. Okay. Mm -hmm. good. good point. Very good. Um, where can we find? We talked a little bit about high tunnels and who produces that or the food hub. Talk a little bit more of the food hub, farmers markets. You've mentioned those types of venues maybe on how to get sure. food. What, what farmers are markets are going to get launched here very soon and we have uh, two existing ones in Little Falls itself. Um, if I'm not mistaken, it's it's this week or next that what some of them are getting going and are you going to find that tomato no maybe not but you know that's where you find the honey and you find the other products that they have uh, made locally and so the farmers markets is a great asset but i'll, I'll let uh, elizabeth talk about some other ones that are out there as well yeah um the e-group through live better live longer actually has a community garden at gamrad park this year that's starting out and um, it's a true community, community garden concept. Instead of dividing up the plots, we're going to do one whole garden together. We have several families that are signed up for that. And then they'll be using that local produce in the Oasis Share Meal, which is coming up. We'll be helping with that on May 21st. Um, and so that's another another way is just um, going gardening, of course, and, or being part of a community garden. If anyone's interested in that, they can um, you know call the St. Gabriel's Hospital and. Um, people, there still might be some openings or for families, okay. um, but Oasis Sherry Mill is going to be helping with the gardening and then using the produce in their meals for low-income families. So. Oh, no. Very fun. And as you mentioned, that food hub, which has been a very hot topic in the area, and um, it sounds like that is on progress to be up and going before year's end, and that will be another uh, resource for people to seek out farmers markets and then they in turn will, the growers, you know, that's who I can kind of speak on, they will be selling their produce to them. Mm -hmm. And then that is sold to, like uh, Elizabeth had mentioned, the schools and the hospitals mm -hmm. and uh, the restaurants and stuff who are looking for a steady 
good size quantity mm -hmm. too, you know, so everybody can kind of contribute to that um, once approved by the whole system. Yeah, yeah so the, they're calling it the, um, it's from Sprout, Minnesota, so they're calling it the Sprout Food Market now, and it's located in the old Crestliner building, so we had a tour of that on March 20th, so that was interesting and exciting to see, so I'm excited to partner with them on cooking and, um, you know, teaching the skills that go along with, you know, having the local food, because if they don't know how to prepare it, people may not be willing to purchase it, it or they're worried it's going to go bad in their fridge. So having having that collaboration. It is a great <clears throat> thing. I know um, Region 5 has been yeah. instrumental in that and in a couple mm -hmm. of the meetings I've been at, I've certainly been interested to learn more about that opportunity. And mm -hmm. I, I think it just takes this whole concept that is so important and so um, uh, widespread and just in, in the limelight. And we really have a good opportunity to be right. able to, to showcase that, I think, in Little mm -hmm. Falls here. Yeah. So I'm excited for that too move forward. Yeah, and we bring up the two, uh, even in our local grocery stores, just look for that Minnesota Grown mm -hmm. sticker that is on there. And so when we say local, like I mentioned, it's not necessarily just here in Morrison County borderline, but we want to support Minnesota as a mm -hmm. whole. And you can go to minnesotagrown.org, or I, I would guess, that I know in the, some of the extension offices that I work in, we have an, a publication and you can mm -hmm. seek out the growers that are in our areas and it's broken into regions. And so whether you're looking for an apple orchard in the fall or you're looking for somebody who's growing strawberries that you'd like to go pick strawberries. So mm -hmm. those resources that are out there, just look for them mm -hmm. and think about all the benefits that we just mentioned, the nutritional benefits and then just the carbon footprint and keeping our economy um, really growing so that we're supporting everybody here in greater Minnesota as well. Yeah, and there often are choices you can rec you can find in the store where, you, you know, you may not, if you're not used to looking for it, the sign that says, you know, grown locally. Mm -hmm. Hopefully grocery stores are getting into that signage more, but I know Coburn's, I think, does that. Mm -hmm. I, um, and so, you know, trying to look for that, oh, this is grown nearby and, you know, maybe even a little cheaper, but supporting, supporting that effort will help mm -hmm. the farmers and help in general, like we talked about. Exactly, and I think the taste, too, is something. Taste yeah. is something <laughs> Um, talk a little bit about, you, you mentioned the preparation of that. Um, if somebody's out there and they have um, a garden or they have some containers and they're producing stuff, you know, how do you keep some of that? You know, there's, it's not just about eating that tomato that's fresh, it's about maybe making a sauce or, or putting the beans or peas in the freezer or canning it or doing all of that mm -hmm. with the, the pre pre preservation of those things. Do you help with that also? Personally, I, I don't, but our extension um, website, so extension.umn.edu backslash garden, and uh, I know that sounds crazy. <laughs> Google it. You know, <laughs> it. But I know we have publications that will talk about storage and the ideal temperature for those root crops and things of that nature. And then in conjunction with Iowa State and South Dakota State, the university has an answer line. And so that is available Monday through Friday and people that might have questions about storage temps or, or uh, cooking uh, degrees that we might, you might not be able to find. But that's a resource that people can use too. And so it's just an 800 number and by calling your local extension office, they can literally transfer you right into it. So. Okay. Yeah, and we, do, we used to do that more traditionally with extension, you know, teach canning and pre, uh, mm -hmm. preserving and all of that. And now we're a little limited to, uh, due to food safety issues and things. Yeah. But we do, you know, we do offer resources for that. We can refer people. That's one thing extension does really well is they have so many resources to share. If anyone has a question, they can call into extension and, and get an answer usually, mm -hmm. or at least get a referral to someone who would know the answer. Mm -hmm. But, uh, I, you know, a lot of people don't think of freezing sometimes. They think they have to do this complicated um, preservation method. But tomatoes and blueberries, they can just be thrown in the fridge, basically, in the freezer. Yeah. In the, they can be frozen. They can be frozen just like that. And then um, I always freeze my tomatoes, and then you just I thaw them in the oven, and then the skins come right off and throw them in the blender. And uh, they, you don't have to take any time then if you have room in your freezer to just throw them in a Ziploc. I just wash them and put them in their hole with the stem and everything. Yeah. And really? then, yeah, um, blueberries as well can be huh. frozen, you know, strawberries are great because then they're so cheap and in season you can have them for the winter yeah um <clears throat> like the tomato idea <laughs> tomatoes it's easy and they taste so fresh because yes. they just were picked and thrown you know washed mm. and thrown in the freezer um and i just put them in a pan in the oven and on you know around 350 it just takes a short time for them to thaw out and then um you can blend them up and make t uh, spaghetti sauce or Cook them forever down to pizza sauce. Sure. <laughs> There's lots of things online you can find out about freezing. 
So yeah, and we have an extension educator. She's at a regional level, as as we've indicated. You know, we might be more local, but extension goes all the way to yes. region and state levels. Mm -hmm. And uh, Deb Botzik Lynn is a fantastic one. If you watch for those spring gardening days that our counties uh, typically hold, she is one who will do an entire class and talk about that preserving and canning mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. get into some of the details that you might be looking for. Hmm. Well, yeah. that will help with my tomato abundance <laughs> problem in August in there when that comes. Uh -huh. Great tips. Um, so you talked a little bit about where people can find more information. How are they going to, you know, calling the local extension office, really put some in touch with both of you or the other services and everything that is provided right. anywhere else? You know, the extension sites are great. And as I mentioned, that Minnesota Grown, if you're looking for a, a site on that, um, we can transfer and get you yes. to the right person. And that's the important thing that, you know, many people can remember back in the day when it was ext extension agent and each county had an extension agent. And we've done a shift and we're trying to, you know, cover a lot more territory with a little bit more limited resources in some ways. But extension is there for all of us. We're all taxpayers at a county and state level. And so just contact your local county extension office and they'll get you in touch with the right person. Yeah, so the, the um, website for health and nutrition would be just z.umn.edu and then slash health and nutrition. And um, they have a map where you can find each, each uh, SNAP-Ed educator um, who, if you're, they're interested in partnering to do classes, to do cooking classes. Um, and then also um, on that website, there's some online trainings and answers to different questions and just some general information. So lots of recipes. There's a recipe box on there for... Yeah. Recipes. Through gardening, we also have what's called the Yard and Garden News, and this is a fantastic thing that those of you with email out there can go ahead and just subscribe to, and it's sending out timely kind of news releases, whether it's bug issue or disease issue or just um, when to put your crabgrass pre-emergent treatment down for your lawn, that we're one of the most popular sites at Extension, so Yard and Garden is specifically it, and uh, again, just going on the Extension site, you can find it very easy. and just unlimited resources that are there for you that uh, I don't think most people know about. Well, and topics, every topic you can almost imagine, I think extension in some form, whether it's mm -hmm. YouTube with local foods or, or growing or mm -hmm. the livestock or the, uh, the other, the other right. issues that we have, yeah. the 4-H, all of that and stuff. So mm -hmm. extension really is quite broad in terms mm -hmm. of if you have that question you don't know the answer to mm -hmm. or you're looking to mm -hmm. to get some more information extension really is a good place to start yeah and they also have a family development area mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. any issues with you know the, anything you want to look up about children or uh, your family economy there's lots of resources there too for that there yeah. are and you do some classes, you said. Do you both do classes at times and in-person training? Or? I do, and um, I'm hoping in Morrison County, again, it'll be more focused on the small vegetable growers and such, but I do educational days, um, Stearns Benton counties. I have spoke at Todd County this this spring as well as up in Otter Tail, and so um, we're kind of being requested to speak and be resources to each other in extension, and it's a great opportunity, all sorts of topics. And one that's really popular right now is just starting from scratch. Because as I mentioned, you know, there's been that disconnection. They may have remembered gardening with grandma, mm -hmm. but they don't remember all the details or how to get going. And so Extension has that opportunity for people to seek out resources. And we're working on new curriculum all the time of stepping almost back of saying, okay, how about someone who has zero experience and doesn't know, you know, green roots are roots from the green tops kind of yeah. thing. And so we're working on that all the time. And as she mentioned, another popular thing is creating little videos um, or webinar options out there as well so right. the visual seeing it versus just reading it yeah but we do we do a lot of in-person work with the nutrition education part um, we do a lot of classes and we try to always have um, classes going with youth as well as adults and we have different curriculum we can use in the schools and then with different groups different age groups Fun. so I'm, I'm working with uh, the steps program right now um, in Little Falls and we'll be bringing them over to the garden so giving that them that experience it's yes. a program that's for special ed teens and young adults. Oh, so I teach cooking skills to them right now and then they're really excited about going to work in the garden. A lot of them have no experience and some have quite a bit of experience so they'll kind of teach each other 
too. Great. And so I grew up with my father who planted a huge garden, and <laughs> and I'm not quite as good at that, but I, I do try. Um, what should be in the ground now? What's the first thing we need to think about? Th those greens are the greens. first thing, but soil preparation is the big thing. So amending your soil, getting some good compost in there or a manure source of something because fertility of your soil is essentially what's going to be the trigger of having a bountiful crop or a pretty skimpy, weak crop. So um, starting with that is also a good good starting place. And then, um, like I said, getting those cool crops. And before we know it, we seem to have an early spring this year. So yes. <laughs> um, we should be able to kind of skip ahead, even though we mentioned today some snowflakes are flying. <laughs> It'll <laughs> but, change in a few days. Right? Yeah, I'm hoping, I'm <laughs> optimistic. So <laughs> being able to get those cool crops um, in there and going and, and if needed, if you jump started and the uh, garden centers are going to be opening up and having the tomatoes and the peppers for sale. And so um, just give them protection if they need it instead yeah. of watching them freeze up yeah. at some point <laughs> yet this I spring. Think maybe don't be afraid to try. I know it's I was right. too and I thought, oh, and, and my husband convinced me, no, we should have a garden and now I love it. So I'm glad we did that because you, you buy a package of seeds and some may work, some may not. It may take mm -hmm. a few years to get it going, but it really is an inexpensive way. And certainly my boys have liked that too. They do a good job. So mm. it is something that's really quite fun um, in addition yeah. to being healthy and, and another option. Right. Mm -hmm. An experiment, like you, should, you indicated, mm -hmm. try those new recipes yes. that are going to use some kohlrabi or something that you hadn't mm -hmm. done in your garden before because you're going to get all the nutritional value of those mm -hmm. other crops. Very fun. Yeah, square foot gardening is um, something I'm trying this year, so we'll see how, <laughs> see that, how that goes. But our, the trees were coming over our yard, and so we had only had limited space. And I thought, well, <laughs> square foot gardening seems like a good option for. Well, what is that? Um, well, you have to mix together um, a special mix of soil, it's compost, and peat moss, and vermiculite. And then it's a lot of work to get it started, but my sister does it, and she says it's really. It's really kind of no work after that. Who compacted. That's true. It's oh, compacted. Okay. Just and it's square feet. Right. Divided up right. into square feet. D into square feet versus traditional roll that you run the tiller down the middle of it kind of thing. Oh. That you're really just doing uh, isolated areas of a, of a given crop that are in square feet kind of idea. Okay. So, and when we were talking about resources, Extension has one of those out there that kind of tells you you can fit X amount of carrots in you know, oh, that amount a of lot. space. It's, so, it's a lot. Yeah. yeah, and then also part of it's vertical, so you have to build kind of Trellises. something that have, mm -hmm. have the things that can grow up to give more room in the garden. So it's basically using a small amount of space to fit a lot of vegetables and mm -hmm. you get quite a high yield from a small area. Well, very interesting for those out there with little backyards mm -hmm. or maybe no backyards to be able to do a little bit more. And container gardening. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, great. Options. Well, if, good luck. <laughs> I hope it goes well. We'll see. <laughs> well, thank you both for joining us. Thanks, very Sarah. interesting information. Very useful and I appreciate you taking the time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for joining us with the, for the York County Government Show, which is aired on Fridays at 2 p.m. and Saturdays at 7 p.m. on Charter Channel 180.